I'm on my way to Zion National Park and it is sunrise. We've been on the road for mm, less than an hour and it's going to take a while to get there today. Say good morning, Raymond. I'm doing some work in the car. Still driving along. We're almost to Fredonia and maybe to Burger King to get some hash browns. I'm very excited about that because I want some of that salty fried goodness. Anyway, my car just reached 80,000 miles. Still trucking, still doing good. We're pulling into Canab. We're gonna stop and get something to eat and head on out to the park. How long do you think from Canab to the park? Do we know yet? The park, the lodge, it's all different. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, we are staying at the lodge in the park and I'm really excited about it. They were having winter specials because it's actually kind of pricey to stay there, which I guess is, is normal. But I wonder how far it is from the park, the park door to the lodge. I'm very excited about this whole trip. I'm wondering about everything right now. Anyway. That, that's because you've never been there. I know. <laughs> Have you there. ever been there? I've been there, yes. Uh, Twice. Really? How have we not talked about this yet? No wonder you know so much about it. I really don't know anything. I know it's I know there's a tunnel that we go through. You could do a video Ooh. during that. Can you honk your horn? My dad always honks his horn through tunnels. How obnoxious is that? But I love it. No honking. I will say honk. Okay, that's enough. Okay. Loud? I will verbally honk. Okay. <laughs> well, there's a few clouds in the sky. It's looking a little bit dark and dreary <laughs> out that way. Oh, yeah. We just passed the visitor center. That was closed the last time we were here, even though it was supposed to be open when we were supposed to get our permit for South Coyote Buttes. <sighs> Uh -oh. oh, there's a bunch of puppy dogs for adoption in front of the uh -oh. fire station in Canab. This trip needs a puppy dog. Dude, you cannot say that to me. You know me well enough to uh, know that. There's a sign here. Sign. We All right, we got to find food now. Bye-bye. Okay, now that we got here, we're actually doing our planning using the guide little map thing that they give you at the entrance. We started to go down the scenic drive and then turned around and went to the visitor center and now we're headed back down the scenic drive. I think we're going to do a couple of short little easy hikes and take some pictures, get the lay of the land a little bit for some uh, photo shoots later on today and tomorrow. And we're going to try to make it out to Grafton today. I'm pretty excited about that. Are you excited about Grafton? It is It is a ghost town, so we might get to talk to some ghosts. Well, it happened. It took me five hours, almost, but I broke out the red vines. So Raymond thinks that maybe, maybe he hasn't been to Zion before. <laughs> maybe it was Capitol Reef. <laughs> I was at Arches and Yellowstone. And now, was this Grand like Teton. some sort of college uh, around the country road trip? That was part. That was one one trip through here. But so for that, I, I, was here I think you've then. told me stories from that that you were like not not of your right mind. You were sleep deprived the whole time. A little bit, yeah. We didn't really camp. We just went to the next part of the country. So. That would explain why you wouldn't remember it from that trip. But if you've been here before, other than that, I think maybe you weren't here because it seems like you'd remember this place. I have entire rolls of film from San Diego through Northern California, way north of San Francisco, that I have the pictures. And I guess they were from my camera, but I don't remember. <laughs> it was it was a long time ago. There was other circumstances involved. Look, the influence weeping rock of, of why are you so sad <laughs> where is weeping rock there's a parking lot for we weeping rock yeah there's like a waiting list wow there's like a queue to get in 
press on. That must be very important. Hmm. People might be trying to cheer up the weeping rock. <laughs> Maybe if you cheer up the weeping rock, you get a prize. Oh, there's some cactuses here, some prickly pear. That's the first oh, time I've seen. Crazy! Them. Look. Oh yeah, you can't. You guys can't see that. Too fast. Too fast going by. Let's see if I can film it from the front. With the top down. To I really could not believe this. you just said that. Raymond just told me that I need a Wrangler. Well, how do we? Raymond, if you buy me a Wrangler, I will have a Wrangler. Even my car is. Snapchat can't off. afford a car right now. Look at this. <laughs> Snapchat keeps buying camera equipment and computers. <laughs> hmm. Can't believe I just referred to myself in the third person. I apologize for that, everyone. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We're on the scenic drive. We passed the lodge. Though can't I did not see. see... Can't look up. The lodge. I think there's more to the lodge than what we saw. I don't know the rest of it is though. So. Oh wow. Wowie wow wow wow. Wildlife. I love them. I only have the 24 millimeter lens on me right now. Luckily Raymond is taking some pictures of these little beauties. What little sweethearts. And did I mention this like crazy beautiful little trail we're on? It's paved, <laughs> but really fun. <laughs> okay, so something just happened that Raymond told me I should vlog about, and I'm gonna let him tell the story because I'm a little beside myself right now. So if you've watched Lee's videos for the past four years, you know she pretty much like goes with the flow, nothing bothers her, great person, great role model. Oh my God, I can smell your peanut butter for, chocolate. Oh, for myself so and others. Anyway. Except just now we're here at Zion. It's beautiful. It's like we're like literally in heaven here. Um, it is. It is. It is. You are inside of nature's beauty. You're in in nature's bosom. Womb. Bosom. bosom. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was quite some imagery there. <laughs> um, so, but there's this group. It's like a tour group or something. Led they by, are. They're with the National Park Service. Like a ranger. Service. I know. Like, I don't know how much you pay for that, but... Um, so this the, the, this gentle old man, actually, we're looking at him right now. We're like 15 feet away from him. He's so cute. And Lisa laid back, this gentle He's old man. They're, talking, they're right behind the car. And I'm like, ah, you know, whatever. They're just doing the thing. And Lee's like, yeah, 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 whatever. But then the gentle man, gentle man, cute, cute old man, leans on her car. And she leans over to me. <laughs> and she goes, start the fucking car. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, I start the car and they immediately like pop off and they're like, they're so like, you know, apologetic looking and stuff, but she turned into a demon. There's one thing that bothers me. Okay. Obviously there are things that bother me about the world, but there's one thing that really gets to me and that is the whole, you know, the golden rule, you know, treat others the way you want to be treated. And a part of that is respecting other people's property. And for some reason, when it comes to cars, it really bothers me when people do stuff like that. When they like lean on somebody else's car, that has happened so often that I come out to my car and somebody's like sitting on my car or something and it really bothers me. <laughs> it also incidentally really bothers me when I'm driving and you try and mess with my controls. I remember boys in high school trying to flirt with me like that and I was like, get out of my car. How's your bar? How's your candy bar? It's good. Luckily, I have a candy bar, too. I gotta eat it now. We've been wandering around for several hours now, and it's overcast. So it's not the best photography opportunities, but... I don't know, it's pretty, been, been pretty cool to explore. Now we're gonna see if we can get checked in at the lodge. And relax for a little bit before we head out to the ghost town for sunset. Hey! So I just got into the cabin, which is just the cutest little thing you've ever seen. And there is a fireplace with a remote. And I pressed, I pointed at the fireplace and pressed on and you have to wait 30 seconds for it to turn on. It's not turning on yet though. Let's see if it's gonna start. Not starting. Maybe I did it wrong.
it lit up that time. It just made a noise. I'm so excited. Oh! The pilot lit. <laughs> I'm so excited right now. <laughs> I had no idea that there was a fireplace here. And it's remote. <sighs> That's awesome. And it tells you the temperature and then I guess maybe the fireplace is basically the heater because it has, you set the temperature on here. This is awesome. I'll take you guys on a tour later. Here we are. So I got the, uh, the two bed, the two bed cabin. Cause I don't know I was excited about having two beds and you've seen my fireplace and look, they even have recycling and trash here. I like it. They're very environmentally friendly at these national park lodges. And I have a desk. I guess I have Wi-Fi, which I'm happy about. Although I did bring, I knew there was high speed internet access. So I brought my Hutu trip mate just in case I needed to create Wi-Fi for myself with the uh, plug-in internet. I do actually have a heater. Look, it's down there with my nice little chair. I'm gonna pull this up next to the fire later. Seriously, and there's a bench here. I'm gonna put my little boots up on it. Well, probably my bare feet, but okay. Beds. Hey, look, there's me back there. That's me. Hi. Oh, I'm such a dork. I've got, oh wow, this is like a real bathroom. Ooh, a real bathroom with like tile and stuff. And my little kitchenette and sink area. Oh, there's a safe up here, which is nice. I like safes. You know what I'm wondering though? I wonder, oh yeah, that's pretty big. That'll fit my, my new MacBook. Cause it's 15 inches and I was actually thinking like, hmm, sometimes I've had, really had to squeeze that um, or angle the 13 inch in there into the safes before. I've got tea, coffee maker, and then I've got a little kind of door here. What's in here? You know what? I think this leads us to the other the cabin next door. I don't go in there. Huh. Well, it's lovely. Look up. So cute. I really couldn't ask for anything at all more than this. Did I mention there's a bench outside the front door? Hi. We're hanging out, having a little food. Raymond's having a Coca-Cola. So how's it going? Good. How's your day been? My day's been all right, except I'm not quite over my near-death experience. Oh, well, you were fine. <laughs> okay, no, it wasn't actually she's a near-death like, experience. Oh no! <laughs> and she's down at the bottom. It was, it was scary, and we'll show you pictures of this ravine here, or whatever. And I'm sure some of you have made it no problem, but like, I'm really chicken when it comes to like, not there not being much margin for error. Um, and I also just fall a lot on my own. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, I'm up, I'm about 20, 30 feet above, uh, above Lee. And she's like, I can't make it. Take my camera. Oh, I did not say that. And I'm like, oh, okay. It's like, oh, okay. You can't make it. You're too scared. But oh yeah, take, take my camera. Take my In camera. fact, I said, go to the top and take some pictures. I'll meet you back at the junction. Take my camera. <laughs> you might not make my word it, against it. take my camera. Don't hurt it. <laughs> I would not send my camera to the top of that thing. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm -mm. I need oh, to like get down there. and lay down on the ground for a little bit. I need to get down off this mountain and lay down on the ground so that like I can feel better. <laughs> You didn't even never, the scary part. I know. I've never been so scared in all my life, and I'm sure it's like nothing for most people. But for some reason, today was the day that I discovered my fear of heights. Or just my fear of death. Interesting. So, anyway. Raymond has been uh, shooting with his D600 and the kit lens, uh, along with the V1 that I brought and then pawned off on him. Anyway, how have you... Have you been liking the D600 and its kit lens? Because, you know, a lot of people get a little snooty about kit lenses. What do you think? I'm sorry, I can't take you seriously with those heart sunglasses on. <laughs> You're like, oh, please give me some technical information. You're like, 
<laughs> I... <the> girl. <laughs> it is Valentine's Day this week, That's my true. friend, and I am celebrating. I don't do real well on Valentine's Day. Mm, yeah, I'm, frankly, I'm not a big Valentine's Day fan either. But, but, come on, tell us. But, oh, it's fine. Works great. I love really? the kit lens. D600 kit lens. 24 85 variable aperture. So people are like, oh, God, variable aperture. It's F3.5 to F4.5. If it were an F4 lens, everybody would love it. But because, like, when you zoom in, it goes to F4.5. Mm -hmm. Oh, what are you doing? It's not professional on FX. It's mm -hmm. fine. It works great. It's a great lens. The focusing distance, you saw me at 85 millimeters. Yeah. Actually. The focusing distance at 85 millimeters is like... Camera. It's actually very Subject. close. It's just a few inches. Uh, so you find the clarity of your photos when you use it, or oh, it's great. Fine. It's fine. It works. Yeah. It works great. It's it's mm -hmm. much. It's it's kind of the the equivalent of the old, very old, out of production, um, eighteen to seventy, three point five to four point five on DX, eighteen yeah. to seventy, eighteen to seventy, yeah, eighteen to seventy. So I guess that technically had a little bit more on the long end equivalent. So functionally, uh, functionally very similar, and it actually much better than that lens, and it's FX, and it's it's variable mm -hmm. aperture. And... Well, it's a new lens. Yeah, it's it's good. It's good. Hmm. I don't. I mean, I like primes like you do, but yeah, you know, when when I don't know what's coming, and I've been shooting the V1 ultra wide all day, so I've been been able to cover wider than 24 millimeter mm -hmm. equivalent, and it's a. Uh, it's good. I put your little telephoto on the V1 now, so I could take pictures yeah. of that ravine. Yeah, did I mention stuff. I brought that too? 30 to 110. So 30 to 110. Playing around with that. It's fun to have telephotos sometimes when you're out and about. You know, the the normal, you know, what everybody does is take these wide angle shots. And, okay, they're gorgeous. And I have a 24 millimeter on my camera right now. But it's kind of fun to have telephoto, you know, as well, an we'll option. Show people behind you the trees on the, uh, on the cliff. Oh, look. It's snowy. It's no, it's cool. not snow. Pretty cool too. but yeah there's trees like look there's trees all the way up and down it's just it's gorgeous here gorgeous yeah look telephoto it's not bad it's also right. really nice with the everyone you know people pick on the 2485 for variable aperture pick people pick on the v1 because they're like uh, digital viewfinder, electronic viewfinder. No, photography's ruined with that camera. Well, there's so much glare because the sun is really high up right now that when I take the picture, it automatically reviews it in the viewfinder, and I can actually see the picture that I yeah, took. Yeah, it's Instead really of being nice. Like, all I see are fingerprints and stuff on the back, but yeah. I just. And there we go. Yeah, it it's is. Like, it's like a viewmaster. Yeah, it's 1:30 in the afternoon, so it's pretty. It's pretty. Not ideal lighting conditions right now. But it's a beautiful day. I'm actually getting a little bit chilly now that we're sitting here. I think yeah. it's time to move on. I think I'm ready to go back down and explore some other stuff. I want to go see the Weepy Rock. Oh, that's where everybody was yesterday. Yeah, I'm curious. So there's this guy hiking yesterday, right? We're on this long trail. <laughs> and it, oh, yeah. It wasn't strenuous. I mean, you could bring your kids or whatever. Like today, you could bring your kids except when it... Yeah. Except when you get to that part that we turn around, you know, have this, to bring some extra kids yeah. or your neighbor's kids or something. Yeah, the, that's not nice. This trail um, is actually quite steep, though. The but this so other this river trail is but, flat. It was a couple miles or whatever, and uh, I was hungry. And and there's this guy coming up the trail. I didn't we didn't bring anything because it was just a little side hike. And there's this guy walking down the trail, and he's got a bag of chips. Okay, we've all had a, a full bag, bag of, chips of chips in our backpack. No, he's got the big supermarket <laughs> size or whatever, and he's just he's just walking along and he's eating out of it. And at first. I'm like, or, you know, get a load of the guy walking around with a bag of chips. I'm like, this guy's a genius. He just has a bag of potato chips. Big one. He doesn't care. He's got it. He's got it under his arm like a baby or a football. And he's just eating them with his other hand walking down the trail. I've got this stupid thing. Smartest guy alive just has a big bag of chips. <laughs> it was. And I've wanted barbecue potato chips ever since. It was awesome because you didn't know what was coming. You, you're walking around a corner and you just hear chip crunching and a mm -hmm. little bit of bag rustling. I know. I know. I admit it. At first I was like, come on, dude. Like you're walking around with your camera on a tripod under your arm. And in the other hand, what you're actually using is a bag of chips. It was awesome. And then I was like, huh. He's like, hero, kind of hungry. Hero of Zion. <laughs> real men of Zion. The real men of Zion. Okay. All right. And now I'm really getting cold. 
the clouds are starting to roll in. It's actually supposed to rain this afternoon. I think starting in like a half an hour or something. The lighting's much more even now. Yeah. Might be better. God, I gotta go take some pictures. So downtown Springdale is actually pretty cute. There's a bunch of galleries and gift shops and there's a couple places for ice cream and there is a candy company right here. Springdale Candy Company. Let's check it out. That was fun. <laughs> well, it's my last evening here. I am catching sunset. It's awfully pretty. I laughed, I hiked, I posed in a cemetery. Hmm. Anyway, it's been awesome here. I highly recommend it, even during the winter months.